Good morning. I'm out of breath because I've just had a shower. But I've also, about 10 minutes ago, had a really interesting conversation on Twitter. And that's what this video is about. It's about energy management. Um, I've had an awful lot of conversations with long COVID in the past six months, um, privately. And they're asking, when you say energy management, what kinds of things are you including in energy management? Everything. From the second you wake up in the morning to when you go to sleep, everything you do requires energy. Breathing requires energy. Thinking requires energy. So if you are a long COVID and you're resting in terms of sitting in front of the TV and watching Netflix TV endlessly, or sitting and reading a book, or chatting to friends on the phone, or um, what else do you do when you're resting when you're a normal, healthy human being? Sit and read a book. All of those things require energy. I remember when I went to my local CFS support team many years ago, over a decade, about 12 years ago, um, they got me to fill in a spreadsheet every half hour. What were you doing then? And I didn't think that TV, doing the washing up, feeding the dog, feeding my fish, I didn't want to include any of that because in my mind that wasn't using energy. It uses energy. So if you want to track your energy management effectively, you have to really, what do their politicians call it? Dig down, dig down into the detail. Um, so for example, I am not drying my hair because I simply don't have the energy available to me to dry it. No makeup, I haven't even put conditioner on my hair because I couldn't have my arms up there for any longer than just simply washing my hair. I've got a spray on conditioner that I only use when my senses aren't flared because it's got a very slight odour. <laughs> um, yeah, so just be very, very, very aware that the slightest thing requires energy. If you're going through stress, which obviously if you've got long COVID, you're stressed. The fact that your body is going nuts with stress is using energy. Um, so I'm actually thinking of creating a downloadable PDF that you can download from Emmy Foggy Dog um, and you can fill it in yourself with your how you're using your energy because I know very well that many of you will eventually get a referral to your local CFS service if there is one. There isn't one everywhere. I've spoken to far too many people that have never received a referral to a CFS clinic because they don't exist where they live. Um, and obviously this is only for long COVID that have been told they are likely to be developing ME-CFS by their doctor. I'm well aware that there are long COVID that aren't going on to develop ME-CFS, and I detest that term, ME-CFS, ME, but your local service will be called a CFS service, not an ME service. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, those of you that are looking at the diagnostic criteria and are thinking, I think this is going to turn into ME, this video is for you. Um, but yeah, you just need to be just holding this, my phone up, my arm is shaking, so I hope that the screen isn't. Just doing this video, just talking, is using energy. Um, you need to be very, very, very aware of every single smidge, speck of energy. Your body uses energy to digest food. Um, many of you are having uh, GI issues and IBS issues at the moment. Pay attention to how much your body is losing energy after you've eaten. All this kind of stuff uses your energy battery and that's something that you need to be aware of. It's not going up and down stairs, it's sitting and watching TV. I literally have to come to my room and lay flat in the quiet with the curtains drawn for like an hour when I, and it's not even fatigue, it's not functioning. I get so tired, I can't feel my arms and legs. My arms and, is uh, the communication between my brain and my body just goes, it stops functioning. Um, and I know that's when I've really crashed because my brain simply can't feel my limbs. Yes, if my house was on fire, my adrenaline would kick in and I would be able to get out of my house safely. But if my house isn't on fire and I don't require adrenaline and I have to physically lay down flat, I can't feel my arms and legs. Um, 
Yeah. I think that's what people don't understand. You can still have an adrenaline surge to get you out of serious situations if you've got mild or moderate ME, severe patients. I don't think so. Um, but um, when you run, run on adrenaline, the crash is three, four times harder. So you don't want to switch to adrenaline. You don't want to even attempt to push through because you may well end up making your ME more severe in the long term. Um, anyway, I'm going now. Um, but yes, please do message me if you want any advice about energy management. Been there, done that. While you're waiting for your referral, learn about it from the patients that know, including myself. There are many of us on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all happy to help. Um, enjoy your Saturday as much as you can. Rest, drink lots of water and take care of yourselves. Catch you later.